I'm going to share with you something that I do with my students every day at the beginning of every class period. Apparently, this is something that's considered social emotional learning, and it just takes a short amount of time at the beginning of every class period. So I do it, and I really think it helps. To me, uh, some people call it mindfulness. I call it being intentional, um, maybe centering. I don't really know what you call that, but focusing. So I asked my kids before we actually do the first time, I asked them, so what are you in control of? And they think for a while. And really the answer is we only control this. We only control ourselves. We can't control other people. We can't control what other people think. We can't control outcomes, situations. We can only control ourselves, what we think, what we say, what we do. And it all starts up here. So we talk about that a little bit. And then I explain to them that we're going to do this thing called 10 seconds of silence. And I actually make it 20 or 30 seconds in reality, but I call it 10 seconds of silence. <laughs> the longer it goes, the better for me, I like, I think. But um, so I explain to them that you're going to close your eyes and I'm going to dim the lights. And I always keep my eyes open because I'm a smart teacher. And um, you're going to put everything down. You're not going to have anything in your hands. You're going to be still and quiet. And what you're going to try to do is try to clear anything that's up in this 10 inches right here and kick every thought out and have just quiet and be in control of this. Not let anything in and kick everything out. So we try to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that really quickly. That may have been longer than 10 seconds. I wasn't looking. So I have a, a, a second hand here on my clock. So um, I watch that and uh, I keep my eyes open, of course. So I explained to them, I asked them if anyone can do that. So that helps them learn self-awareness. It helps them to pay attention to what's in their thoughts and what's in their brains. And I asked them, is anyone able to do that? Sometimes someone is able to, they say, yes, I can. When I ask a little bit more, I find out that that student was in martial arts and they teach self-discipline in martial arts. So um, by the end of the school year, I can have several students who can actually do that. And the ones who don't, at least they have a self-awareness now of what's happening up there and that's a start. I tell them, if you can do that, you are way ahead of some adults. I tell them that I can stand in a crowded football stadium, an airport, anywhere, and I can stop and choose just for 10 seconds to have that quiet. And it's okay, and the world is okay, and for those 10 seconds, it's fine. I can stop in the middle of my busy day here at school when I have 15 things I have to do, and I can just stop and do that. And it makes me feel better, much better. Um, and I explain to them, if you can control what's in here, if you can make that quiet, then you can actually decide what to let in and how much. And you can focus and be intentional. That's the key word, intentional. And I tell them, once you can do that, then you can choose to focus and be a better student, be a better musician, be a better athlete, be a better whatever it is. And But, you, but that intention and that focus is there because you've harnessed this, our most powerful asset right here. You've harnessed this. You have to start. And if that means starting with making it clean to allow one thing to come in, then that's fine. But you go around society today and you go to Buffalo Wild Wings. I counted 47 screens at Buffalo Wild Wings. We're constantly bombarded with stimulus. So choosing to have no stimulus and harnessing and taking ownership of this right here is big. It's huge because we're constantly told, buy this, it will make you happy. Do this, do that, spend money here. Happiness is here. No, 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 no. Start with this. So that's our 10 seconds of silence. I hope that helps with you. I think that sometimes students may have gone through transition or something happened in the hallway and they're all, you know, they're just scatterbrained and everywhere. And so when they come in, they know to expect we're going to do our 10 seconds of silence. And some of them look forward to that. And it just helps. It helps like a pause. It helps. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.